Thank you for joining today's webinar for the Datathon with Fulton Bank. Uh, we are very excited here at Wharton Customer Analytics to bring this innovative data Datathon to the students at Wharton and Penn. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Matt Gray. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Operations for Wharton Customer Analytics. Joining me on the call from Wharton will be Brandon Kukowski, Nicole Wang Trexler, and Maddie Lasser. So let's begin by discussing the Datathon timeline. Uh, today is our kickoff webinar. All students uh, have been given access to data via Canvas. Um, students are, are being asked to sign their data user agreement. Um, you'll have until the 25th to work on your project. Wharton Customer Analytics and Fulton Bank will be hosting office hours for students, uh, both with our technical assistant and with the Fulton Bank business unit members to better understand uh, the business context. On February 25th, final deliverables will be due to WCA via Canvas by 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On February 26th, we'll have final presentations from 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. The virtual student presentations should be on average about eight or nine minutes, and uh, winners will be selected from a judges panel made up of Fulton Bank and WCA leadership. And as a part of the Datathon, uh, students will be uh, competing for cash prizes. The first place team will win a $1,500 Visa gift card, second place a $1,000 Visa gift card, and third place a $500 Visa gift card. So now I'd like to turn it over to Janelle Rolf, Senior Vice President, Chief Data Officer uh, at Fulton Bank. Good morning, everyone. So excited to be here and kick off this Datathon. Uh, it's been a long time in the making and uh, we couldn't be more excited that, uh, that it's actually here. So welcome. If you can move to the next slide, I'm just gonna cover a little bit of the background about Fulton Bank. Hopefully many of you have uh, heard of Fulton Bank before. Um, we just recently expanded into the Philadelphia market, so you may see some uh, financial centers popping up. Um, but you can see we've been around for quite some time. We opened our doors back in 1882. <laughs> um, we're $25 billion in assets today, so we're considered a mid-sized bank. Um, we proudly serve five states, including Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia. We have about 3,500 employees, more than 200 financial centers, and about 300 ATMs. So we are headquartered right, uh, right here in central Pennsylvania in Lancaster, PA, um, but we have teammates spread you know, out all over our uh, five state footprint. So uh, we solicited five lines of business to partner with us in this initial pilot for the Datathon. And those are commercial, consumer, finance, human resources, and operations. And so as we formed those teams and developed the business questions, we paired each of those teams with a liaison from the chief data office, someone in our data science and visualization role. So I'm going to turn it over to my teammates, and they're going to talk a little bit about each of the um, respective teams and a little bit about the data. So first up is the commercial team with Nick Blackman. Nick, are you there? I can speak to the to the commercial uh, business question a little bit if Nick if Nick hasn't made it on. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, essentially, uh, the commercial team uh, is trying to create uh, some sort of prediction model uh, so that we can create recommendations to our to our customers, and so. Much like uh, Netflix needs to recommend uh, movies that that are that are accurate to to your tastes, um, we have that approach with our products, whether they be checking accounts, uh, certain loans, um, or other or other commercial products. And um, and so the goal for the commercial team is really to um, yeah to analyze our data, which uh, you can see on the next slide, um, and. Uh, and really begin to understand how can we recommend uh, the best next product for, for, for our customers. So 
Um, we have a, a slew of marketing data. It's, it's in one single CSV file. Um, and essentially we have customer information on the kind of products that they purchased, the current um, balances that they have on these products. Um, we have uh, some like survey data um, on, on some products. And then we also have transaction data. So essentially like average uh, number of transactions, um, certain uh, metadata about uh, the different products and then the time that they happened. Um, so this is a really exciting project um, from a commercial perspective. Their commercial uh, customers are extremely valuable to our bank. And so, um, yeah, we just, we, we're really excited to see uh, the results of the data found around, around this data. All right, yeah, my name is Otis. I'm part of our lending and risk team and I'm working with the uh, consumer team for this. Um, so we're looking to create a model that, um, seg that segments and identifies customers who are most likely to turn and predict when they are likely to leave. Um, we're also looking to identify products that are likely to retain customers. So kind of the first part is just a customer turn model. Um, in the current state, we um, don't really know why customers leave Fulton. Um, we have guesses, but nothing that's even coming close to being data being data driven. So uh, this is a really exciting opportunity, and um, everybody on our team uh, would find this uh, very useful. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so our data it's pretty simple. It's just one CSV, um, about six hundred fifty thousand rows by one hundred fifty three columns. Um, this is definitely going to get pared down when we work with it. That's how, what I've been spending the last couple of days on on figuring out um, where to exactly filter. Like our data goes back to two thousand thirteen. We're probably going to filter on two thousand eighteen and after, just due to various columns having uh, missing data, and we're kind of trying to pare down the columns as well, but. If you're on my team, uh, we will talk more about that offline. Um, but the current data set as is, there's 410,000 open households and 258,000 closed households. Um, and the data ranges from, yeah, segments and generations, which is how we kind of segment our customers in general, like logically business users think about um, what kind of uh, assets you have versus how old you are. Uh, we have things like balances of uh, total and through various um, product channels, the actual products that you have, whether it's your starting product, your last product, how many you have, your depth and your breadth, and different consumer behavior ones like, do you have kids? Do you have dogs? Do you use Uber and Lyft? Um, all of these things um, will hopefully paint a good picture of kind of uh, people uh, tend to stay with Fulton and leave Fulton. So... We're not, uh, we're open to a lot of ideas of the different models we can kind of use. The last couple of days we've been um, trying to prep our data for at least a logistic regression um, model, but there's a lot of options out there and we're really excited to discuss all the different ways. Um, so the kind of the first steps is that um, pairing down our data and then we can kind of go from there. Hi, so this is the finance team's question. Uh, what we're looking to do here is something similar to what Otis had talked about. Um, what we're looking to do is really focus in on the millennial and younger generations. Uh, we're really looking to identify how to attract those, those generations and retain them. So there's going to be uh, a bit of an analysis into the different products that these customers have, um, as well as more of a, a, a churn model to understand how these customers or why these customers are leaving. Um, so this will be a very uh, interesting two-sided type of problem to where we're not only looking to attract the customers, but also make sure that they uh, stay with us over the long term. Thank you. Um, so what we have available here as far as data goes is we have about 350, or uh, sorry about that, 135,000 customers uh, per month, as well as approximately 600,000 accounts per month. Um, 
Again, this is all millennials or younger. Um, so we have all of their account level details, so their products and service names, uh, a, a summary of their transactions. We have open and close dates, opening locations. Uh, then we also have uh, more of customer level detail to where we're getting into where are they located, uh, their specific age and generation bin, and then what business segment they were assigned if they have a business relationship with us or what consumer segment they were assigned if they have a consumer relationship with us. Um, so this will be a, a very interesting two-sided question. I think it'll be a great challenge and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah, so my name is uh, Sergio Monsalve. I'm a data science and visualization engineer here at Fulton, and um, I'm the Fulton liaison for HR. So our, our question really is, is maybe one layer back from the customer, and it's concerned with, um, with the people here at Fulton. Um, what we're essentially trying to, uh, to find in our data is um, the limiting factors and the factors that, that contribute uh, to our diverse talent retention. Um, so this, this means that we've identified um, employees of color at Fulton and, um, and, and we've essentially uh, aggregated a lot of data um, around that. Um, one of the things that we, that we want to uh, analyze is uh, retention prediction. So essentially what is, uh, what is the probability of retention versus attrition, um, depending on, on different factors and identifying data um, of, of each customer. Uh, so we have recruiting data um, for all applicants for the last three years. Um, they have some demographic information. We also have employment history um, for the last three years. And um, and we have the employees movement through the organization, whether they're an internal hire, um, whether they applied to another position, whether they got a promotion. And then we also have engagement data for the last three years. We have an employee engagement survey that, that kind of measures that data um, at the business unit level. So it's not at the uh, employee level, um, because as you'll see with our data, we, we have a lot of barriers around confidentiality and personally identifiable information. And so... I think it's a really great opportunity to work um, with a data set that most people would not have access to. Uh, um, that's, that, that's really exciting and really impactful for an organization, um, really at the, at the people level, which obviously impacts um, our performance and our uh, customers. So yeah, really excited to, to see all of the results and to work with you all. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jeff Morey. Uh, I'm the uh, DevOps BI team lead for, uh, with my group. And this problem is a very fascinating problem from multiple dimensions. One is conceptually, it's kind of like big data because the individuals and their transactions are not as important to us as the aggregates. Uh, another aspect to this, which is interesting, is that it combines enterprise data and also customer data which is an interesting uh, aspect. And what we're really trying to do is fully understand our costs for ACH transactions that we pay to Fiserv and the Fed. So um, basically we have a multi-tiered uh, set of questions that as we answer each one in the time allotted, we can go to the next more interesting or more complex question. So that's basically what we're doing is understanding our costs. If you could go to the next slide, look at the data. So how to figure out that data, I talked, I made a few remarks about it to, to uh, bring it home for you. We have the transactional data, which is kind of conceptually like big data where the individual transactions or transactions per month per individual are less relevant than their aggregates. We have the customer data, just like some of the other references that you saw, um, where we want to retrieve that customer information and be able to understand um, what demographics and marketing segments and attributes about them uh, 
relate to them doing ACH transactions. And then we have the actual invoices or the enterprise data itself that is our costs as an organization. And we can fit those together to be able to get better understanding. Um, our observation window is from uh, January 2019 to October of 2020. And that's interesting as well because you have COVID and non-COVID data to explore. And we're gonna give you a plethora of additional files that go with that data where we've done some insights that we want to provide to the group. We have some configuration files that will provide insights. We have a data dictionary. We've done uh, something called SuiteViz, which is an EDA report to let you understand those three files quickly and what the distributions are and some of the correlations. Uh, we have an ER diagram that we'll provide. Uh, and then we have a Jupyter notebook that has some of the built-in joins to make things a little easier for people. So we hope that this is an interesting problem that people want to um, sink their teeth into to do some of the um, clustering that we're interested in and also the opportunity potentially for two predictive models, one which would be good for if we acquire uh, uh, another bank and merge, and one in which uh, we would like to find out insights around uh, our vendors and how much they really cost us and under cer certain circumstances, how much could they potentially cost us. So this staircase of Data insights is something that we're looking forward to climbing with the students and getting your participation to really understand uh, your ideas and how we can make this better. So thank you. So now we heard about all the amazing business questions. Now let's go down to how to access the data. So you all have been added to the to the Fulton Data Film 2021 course on Canvas. So in order to access the data, uh, go to the modules. And then you will locate the modules associated with the Photon Bank. And then at here, you will see the data user agreement. So please sign and submit your DUA, and then you will automatically be provided with the, the access to the data. And then you can download the data file associated with your project. And as a reminder, please let us know which project you will be working on by the end of uh, today or tomorrow. And now when it comes to the terms for the data user agreement, please do not share or discuss the data details with anyone who are not participating in the data film. And also please, delete the, all, of the, all of your data files at the end of the data thumb. So and in terms of the team structure, um, we have a mixed team. So we have teams that are made up of Fulton Bank and students. These consist of three or so Fulton Bank line of business members, one Fulton Bank chief data office member, and three to four students from Penn with strong technical training and interest in the subject matter. And then we have student only teams. These are made up of uh, uh, students from across the university. They were formed from different colleges um, at the university. Um, again, the deliverables and final presentation, submit those, all those materials via Canvas. Do that by 9 a.m. Eastern on Thursday, February 25th. Um, that includes your video. The short video that you record um, will be you'll be notified by the end of day, meaning 5 p.m. Eastern on the 25th, if you are a finalist. And those finalist presentations will be held virtually uh, the next day on the 26th. And we'll we'll provide some sample uh, data found presentations in Canvas as well for reference. In terms of the judging criteria, uh, there's kind of four main areas that we'll look at when judging. Uh, the, creativity of, the creativity of your approach, methodology, uh, the quality and clarity of the results, the potential business relevance and impact, and the translation and presentation of results to the audience and judges. And here's our panel. So this is made up of folks from Fulton Bank and WCA. Uh, we have Ryan Curran. He's the Director of Process Optimization um, and Deposit Operations at Fulton. Andy uh, Field, Director of Channel, Segment, and Product Consumer and Small Business Bank. Raghu Iyengar, he's our Faculty Director. Myself, I'm the Research and Education Director. We have Susan 
Larnergan. She's the director of Middle Market and Specialized Commercial Lending. Mark McCollum, Chief Financial Officer. Avi Patel, Chief Marketing, Marketing Officer. Mary Perk, our Executive Director. And Nicole Wayne Trexler, our Associate Director of Data Science and Research. So now let's talk about what are the best practices for your success in the data zone. So the first is to get started right away. Uh, I would say just to test out all the data immediately and let us know if you need any help or if you have any questions. And then in terms of the recommended um, processes is to start by mixed to explore and learn about the data and then to identify the goals and then to form the hypothesis that you have and then write codes and then build your models and then at the end to create your final presentation. But in the meantime, if you have any questions in the entire process, please let us know. So we have two kinds of the virtual office hours. So for all of our students, one is the technical assistant being provided by us. So if you have any data related questions, here are two virtual office hours. Um, and then if you have any question regarding to the business element that related to the business unit with the Fulton Bank, there's also a virtual office hour on Monday, on the February 22nd at noon. I think now we are open to the questions. Um, Nicole, I just wanna add um, for the student only teams, some of you had pre-selected which uh, line of business project you wanted to work on. Some of you did not identify that. We're hoping now that you've had an opportunity to learn more about the projects, you have a little bit more clarity as to which uh, line of business project you'd like to work on. Once you have, have identified the project, please uh, have one member of your team send an email to customeranalytics at wharton.upenn.edu so we know which project that you're gonna be working on for the next week. Awesome, thank you, Matt. Is each team only supposed to do one, one project? Yeah, you should, uh, a team should pick a single project and a single data set to work on. Anyone's not clear about anything, now would be the time to ask while everyone's on. So we'll give it another minute or two. If not, uh... yeah, I think uh, just a quick question about the so the, the video uh, deliverable. Uh, do you see like it being like a recorded Zoom session uh, with PowerPoint, pretty standard? Yeah, we would expect a, um, as Matt noted, like an eight to 10 minute video um, presenting the content on a, uh, probably using PowerPoint slides, mm -hmm. including visualizations, um, including, you know, code, the approach, outlining the entire, uh, the entire approach and, and findings. And you could just upload that video file to Canvas. Mm -hmm. For the Fulton teams, the students will mm -hmm. submit that for us. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. That makes sense. Okay. So we got a question uh, through chat. It asks, will we have access to this recording on Canvas? Yeah, we can put this, uh, we'll put this on the homepage of the, uh, the Canvas course that you've been added to. We'll put a link to the recording, definitely. And then Brandon, can you also add this uh, deck as well? Yeah, we'll do it right after the call.
Okay, last call for questions. Uh, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and end the call. Sorry, Matt, just for the sake of the group, I know this question came up before. So the original submissions are due Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, with the 10 minute video, the PowerPoint and the code. For the finalists that move forward to the Friday um, live, pre well, virtual live presentation, what would that look like? Is it uh, the same recording or do they make a new recording, you know, or new uh, presentation and just do it live? Yeah, so it's gonna, it could be the same, but it will be live. It won't be just the recording, but it could be the same exact presentation. Um, but you know, if you've had an additional day or so, then it could be um, improved or updated. Mm -hmm. Thanks, that's helpful. Yeah. In our last data from Janelle, we noticed that um, some of the teams had, you know, put in, you know, maybe some additional visualizations or cleaned up some of the copy a little bit, you know, just maybe maybe make it a little more visually appealing. So it's just they had that extra time, so they went back and just re-examined the deck and uh, re refined and retuned a little bit of what they wanted to present. And then it's also up to the teams if they want to have everyone on the team do part of the presentation or just one person do the talking. It, it, there's no rules around that, right? No, no, no rules around that. Um, in the in our previous data thon, you know, we found that you know generally one or maybe two people would present just because um, of the amount of time allocated. Great. And then one, one other thing, uh, Janelle, and for everyone, um, you know, one of the other things we noticed in the last datathon is um, some of the teams, they incorporated some of the initial judges' feedback in their updated deck. Okay, so I see another question. It says for teams where parts of the team are the important then employees, how should we reach out and communicate with them? So for the answer to that question is, uh, yesterday afternoon, I added all of the students into the appropriate Fulton Bank uh, employee line of business Slack channel. Um, if you do not have access, please reach out to me directly and I can resend the invite. But the, um, the, the Datathon uh, workspace includes channels for each of the projects, a general channel, um, and that would be probably the best place to start uh, in terms of communication. And we also sent an email introducing all of the uh, members uh, yesterday as well. So uh, look for an email from Maddie Lasser uh, regarding each line of business that included the employee information and student. And I see another question. It asks, uh, based on the past, and data thumbs, are there any specific uh, characteristics that sets apart placing him from others? I wouldn't say there's any particular characteristics. It's going to be for, for the team, it's going to be the characteristics of the presentation. So we've had uh, students participate from all across the university. We've had winning teams from Wharton winning teams from engineering, winning teams from the School of Design. So it's not so much the makeup of the team, it's really gonna be focusing on that final presentation, how well you, um, you know, translate the results to the judges, the audience, mm -hmm. how well do you communicate um, the findings. Um, and then also think about just the clarity and the quality of the approach. Does it make sense for the, uh, for the business questions that you're trying to address? Um, and is it creative? I'll definitely mention creativity is, is definitely something that we uh, will look at. Um, and then just think about the potential overall value to Fulton, specific to the business unit. And I think to add on one more point to that is also it has to be easy to implement because otherwise if it's only all very theoretical, right. then it's going to be very hard for the Fulton side to be implemented. Yeah, that's a great point. Can I ask another quick question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so 
on the Slack channel, uh, so I'm, I'll be working on a finance project and on the Slack channel, I can see a, like a finance data farm channel, but there are 16 members in it. So I'm wondering if that's just one team, all of the, all of the 16 members are one team or other. Oh, uh, uh, that, that's because the WCA team is included in that channel. So um, we, we, we kind of are there just to monitor what's going on, so. Okay, so uh, that, that, that'll be where we communicate with the team, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, I okay. see it in there right now. Thank you. Um, question from William. Yeah, w William, to answer your question, uh, you were placed on a, a student only team with Margaret and uh, Catherine. If you need uh, their information, send an email and we can get you guys connected. Yeah, and I think William, just to follow up on that, it looks like when you registered, you selected student only team. That's why you were placed on a team of other students. All right, any other questions from anyone? I think the only other thing I would add, this is Chanel, is that, you know, the main objective of this is to learn and have fun. So I really look forward to seeing what comes out of it. But at the end of the day, the number one priority is learning and having fun. So good luck, everyone. All right, then we'll go ahead and uh, end this call. Uh, thank you very much to uh, all the folks from Fulton Bank for participating. We know this has been a uh, a while in the making. And, um, you know, we are very excited uh, to be uh, working on this project with uh, your team. Janelle, thank you for the, your leadership uh, on setting this up. And uh, I hope everybody has a great week. Um, please take advantage of the resources available to you from both uh, WCA and Fulton Bank. And we'll be very excited to see all of your presentations uh, Thursday and Friday. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Right, thank you. Thank you.